You're watching Five Idiots Talking Toys. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait until John sees this. That, that is the greatest thing that's ever been on the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Five Idiots Talking Toys. Uh, we're joining an episode midstream today. It is our collector's corner number two. And we have a special guest with us. If you saw part one, thanks for joining us for part two. If you haven't seen part one, head on back and see the previous episode. And then come on back and join us here on this episode. Uh, we're going to be joining the episode midstream. So get ready to see some more of Brian's collection. Uh, it's pretty amazing. He's even got a secret backroom stash that we were pretty surprised to see. So hang on buckle in let's check this episode out and please join us uh on facebook five uh, facebook.com five idiots talking toys and also our sales page with the five of us we pass some things through our collection we have some cool collectibles for you to take a look at and purchase on rogue five toys on facebook and of course here on youtube please subscribe to the channel like this video and when you subscribe, hit that little bell icon and you'll be notified of a new episode every Sunday night around 9 p.m. Eastern time. And you can chat and watch with other folks. All right. So here we are. We're jumping into an episode live midway. Thanks very much for coming back and checking out part two and enjoy there. Let me ask you just, you know, to mix it up. What kind of oddball stuff do you have? Like, what do you have that is not a figure necessarily is something that you just like? Uh, I mean, oddball is a huge category. It can yeah. be anything outside of basically figures and, and toys and some ships and stuff. But what kind right. of weird stuff do you have? <laughs> See, you should have told me you wanted something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not prepared for this one. Well, I mean, you know, like, Bra uh, like Brandon and I specifically, we like to collect, you know, tins and lunch boxes and, you know, just kind of oddball yeah. stuff. That was, you know, out to promote the the series, you know, back in the eighties. So it really is a wide open category. But what do you got? Oh wow, wow! Oh, wow. say something, say something. It is the uh, pillowcase. Oh, that's cool. Empire. Hold on. This box is a little beat up, but I got this. I got a sleeping bag. Is that? The pillowcase came in a box like that? Uh -huh. Yep. I had this when I was wow. a kid. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, say something again. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. But yeah, I had these when I was a kid. I got the... Uh, where's it at? I know I have it somewhere. I have the... Here it is. Add the RTC three PO one too. So, yeah, awesome. I like odd things like that. Um. Oh, sealed play doh. Nice. And pretty much, pretty much anything vintage. I mean, did it, you buy that one for me? What's that? The play doh set? No. Okay, I know I sold at least I, I sold a couple of those. I don't know if I can remember if I sold you that one or not. Yeah. But what what John does when he sells those Play-Dohs is he opens a container and he takes a bite out of them and he sends everybody an impression of his teeth in there. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a mark. Do worse with it, right? <laughs> oh, I don't know what other oddball stuff. I probably have. I have some oddball stuff, but I just can't think of it right now. Well, what's funny is, is it's exactly the same thing as the toys. Like some of it you'll get because you remember having it as a kid. Some right. of it you'll get because you, you know, you had a friend who had it or some of it you'll get because you're like, yeah, I kind of remember that, but I never had it and I want it now. So it's the same as the toys. You might not have had every toy, but now you want every toy. Yeah. And if you see a wallet or a stupid, you know, a lunchbox or a cup or like John and I are all about these pictures. He's got the uh, New Hope picture, and I've got the Jedi picture. It's just cool. It's just cool vintage stuff. Oh yeah, I got I got the 
Yeah, what? man. The glasses are awesome. Oh, yeah. Like the old books, the records. Shane, Shane's pants just got a little tighter. <laughs> <laughs> Pop-up books. You know, I mean, I, this... Yep. Let me see. I don't even know if any of these will work. There you go. There's a sand crawler. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Brandon. I don't even collect cups. I don't even care about those. <laughs> and then, the, you know, the, the records and all that. I remember reading along with these when I was a kid. So I had to get them. Those are cool. And you know what I came across recently, speaking of the records, that I hadn't seen before, and I want to get one because it just looks so cool. Have you seen the record tote? <clears throat> it's like a, it's like a box, it? and it has a handle. Yeah, the record player in it? No, it's not a record player. It's a tote for just records. It's like a hard case just for records, but it's it's totally vintage and super sweet looking. Yeah. Yeah. It's in, is, any is, is that the one that has the prune face on the front of it? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. I was so what do you have? I mean, you can just kind of scan around. We see a few in the back there. What kind of ships and, and vehicles do you have? Those oh. are always fun to see. Well, all of my uh, electronics work on everything except for, and it's a pain in the ass, the Sonic land speeder. I can't yeah. get it to work. I've got them all to work except for that one. And it's it's such a simple concept, but I can't get it to I can't get it to do it. Uh so does that mean are you just kind of on the out like look on the out on the searching out, I should say. Uh another one that you might find that works cuz you've kind of given it your all at this point like will you well, I have a, something like that? Yeah, I have a spare one that I need to try to just to dig in a little more with it but uh for okay. now that it's just you know once i get a little bit more time i'll try to work on it but i've got all the other ones to work um got the falcon the ewok village this ewok village the parts are sealed inside of it but it's uh, it's open on the one end uh same with the shuttle um let's see uh <laughs> <laughs> that that that's a that's an action figure card of charles when you showed the red bar <laughs> hold on a second that is true <laughs> you got the transport um the y wings back there a couple nice. comments that was one of my favorites as a kid the y wing i just yeah. love that toy uh biker scout Snow speeder, Vader's ties back here. Where's it at? There it is. That so one. Doesn't... How do you how do you feel about like you have a whole bunch of them boxed and whether they're open or not? Like, do yeah. you get a little crazy and say like, oh, I really want one of those loose and out for display? Like, do you double up in any any of those? <clears throat> um, I have two Falcons. I have. I think I have two X wings, but pretty much it's. I buy it like with the box, and if it's not sealed, like I'll take it out, mess with it, play with it. But I would rather I don't know what to do as far as I want to do it loose. But then what do I do with the boxes? Kind of thing, you know. For so as for space wise, yeah, I keep it in the box, just so I don't have to store the box. But oh, I take them out, and like this, the B wing. You gotta go. You gotta go the fishing line route and and display the boxes like you are now, and then hang all the ships from the ceiling with some fishing line. Yeah, I tried that, and it ripped. I tried to hang it from that ceiling, and it's <laughs> it's just it ripped it out. Okay, it out. all right. But yeah, I don't know if the batteries are in this. I took all the batteries out. But so Brian, I have a question for you. All right, <clears throat> what's what's the next thing you are like looking for to to buy? Or like, what's your grail piece that you that you want, but you may like never have? Flick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have it ever. Um, I wanted to try to to complete the whole run because I got those Ewoks, and I had two, 
I think two of the droids, but I was going to try to get the rest of them, but they're just so expensive now. Like the take and assist from, and I mean, I'm not counting the fat in, in the A wing, but obviously count the C3PO and R2D2 because they're different, you know, but. I would want to get those carded because the other two that I have are carded. Oh. You know, we were talking about how people are particular, you know, so I got all those graded Ewoks with the coins graded inside there. So the, I have the mocks of the droids. So to me, I would want the rest of the droids line mocks. Not going to happen, yeah. you know, but that'd be something I'd want to do. That and uh, a yak face coin and a Anakin coin so I could finish the last 17 run. Well, I'll probably get you one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much they go for now? A yak coin, you know, if it's graded, you you know, you're probably looking at 500, 600 bucks. I just want it normal and loose. 400, 450? So crazy. So, let me ask you about the droids line. Is is that just like an annoying thing at this point cuz it's like a completionist thing or do you do you really actually watch the cartoon when you were younger? Do you care about those figures? Or is it just like the completionist, I want the Kenner line, you know, the Kenner run? More completionist. Yeah. I mean, I go back and I watch them now. Like, I remember watching the Ewoks movie with the little girl. I can't even remember what it's called now. But uh, I remember, Car Caravan of Courage yeah. or... I remember yeah. watching that when I was a kid, but I never seen the cartoons on TV. Oh, I saw the Ewoks one, <clears throat> but not the Droids one for some reason. And uh, it was just part of the, you know, completing the run. That's all it was. Yeah, I, I've had that in other lines uh, or other areas of Star Wars where they start, you know, going to the expanded universe and stuff. And it's just like, oh, I don't even know who the hell that is, but I kind of want to have them all. And oh, I start getting expanded. frustrated. The expanded universe is awesome. Yeah, I got I got that in that that new K, uh, the new case I got today. I put uh, some of the comic book figures in there i got uh darth revan and boba fett are my favorites uh darth yeah because you'll get some main car you get some mainstream mainline characters out of that universe but then <clears> occasionally <throat> you're going to get like a a super ancillary character mm -hmm. and you're just like yeah, i i don't even who is that like I, right you no know, and then you've got to you got to get them because you want to you know yeah yeah this that's what uh happened but the cool thing is is that now revan's canon <laughs> Darth Phobos is canon, which Darth Phobos was in uh, oh, the, the game with Star Killer. Oh my God, Force Unleashed. Because the Legion of the Sith Troopers, <clears throat> one was Darth Phobos, one was Darth Revan. They brought back a lot of those expanded universe characters into canon, like by name. So uh, it's it's just cool the storylines that they have the uh, the video games. You know, I mean, it's a whole lot to you know take in on top of all the other you know normal canon stuff but yeah the figures are really cool that they put out hey brian what's your grail uh ship piece or playset? do you have a jawa sand crawler i do not box? i do not have that you have a skiff i do i would say the skiff the skiff for my falcon or the the shuttle <clears throat> I would, oh God, I don't know. It might be that Imperial shuttle because I always wanted that when I was a kid, and I, it was too expensive, you know, for us at the time. And uh, I'm going to intervene and say you might just have too much to look at behind you. Like, how do you get anything done? I mean, there's just like layer upon layer. It's like a parfait of Star Wars. <laughs> oh, there's a back room too. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I'm not. Look at Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, air. It's I'm ready for that one. Let's go. Hold on. See, I got some black series there. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it just keeps going. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all Star Wars. Huh? That's all Star Wars. Of course. Oh my. All these notes. I love it. Brian's back room is twice the size of Charles's closet. <laughs> twice. It's like 400 times the size. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, do you want to be uh, part of Rogue Six and start selling? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hear <believe> that. 
Yeah, I got Except my. I want, I want all of this stuff he has in the back. <laughs> <laughs> this is all my the vintage collection in there. Uh, I got a whole bunch of Power of the Force. All this stuff's vintage collection. Like all the ships and there's Slave One. I have tubs just like that in my basement, and it says "Boys' Clothes for T." Yeah, <laughs> not not Star Wars. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, that's that. Got a lot of stuff, and then uh, very nice Black Series helmets, Funkos. Cool. Lightsabers are down there. I hate pops. <laughs> you have everything. <laughs> <laughs> I I hate pops, but I don't. It's it's like a love hate thing. It's like you and Lobot. You know, you hate them, but you love them. That one that you have. You know, it's just one of them things. I don't. This you know. one. Yes. Uncracked <laughs> legs. Watch. <laughs> I have a C three PO Death Star like that. It is they are like so tight and I will I will go back and forth. I will loosen this guy up. This, this guy's gonna be a loosey goosey three dollar figure in about five minutes. <laughs> terrible, terrible. That was gonna be a giveaway for there all of go. our fans. There we go. Here's... Look look at his leg. Oh nope. can't oh, grade it now. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that was on camera. I don't think it was. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> seen up this. Charles no, just dented that's... his back wall with Lobot. Oh, wow. He looks nice. Yeah, you know how hard it is with these. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It's not going anywhere. I'm just looking at the chrome, and I'm looking at the shoulders, and I'm just like, wow, that's... Uh... Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I don't nice. think I've ever seen one so shiny. And I had to, I had to get a card back for it. And then my C three PO is like that too. It took me years to find them like this. Brandon's still searching with his flashlights. <laughs> yeah, I found the goldest one I think I've ever seen in person, and I paid up for it because they're so hard to find. Yeah, mm -hmm. very hard. It is yeah, weird what a what a like range of colors there are for C three PO. Yes, I've got. I can't even tell you how many different ones I got. You can find the three PO and pay fifteen dollars for him, but if you find like a really really nice one and the guy is charging you sixty bucks, seventy bucks, you just buy it because you just yeah. you don't. Yeah. Need it. the one I bought was uncracked, sixty dollars, and I was like, couldn't yep. get my money out fast enough because it was like. I've never seen. I looked at it, you know, with four flashlights, and it was in perfect condition. <laughs> oh, they keep coming. They keep coming. Oh my god! R two D two pop ups. I only have the carded and the graded one. Only. Yeah. <laughs> These are all just regular. And actually, what is that? Is that your? What is that? Is that your your refrigerator? Yeah. <laughs> What? No. There. Ah. I thought you opened up the drawer in your fridge and you're like pulling out all these R2 no. Box, these R2 got, he's got all those figures oh, no. in like a French horn tuba case or something. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys about this one. Now, I, it's got a K on the foot and the way that it's on, it seems like it's embedded in the plastic. And it's, I, I can't, I don't know, it's probably some, it used to be someone's, but, see what I'm saying? It's like in that plastic. Is it, it's written? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I the, the ink bleeds into the plastic is what happens. But it's just so perfectly in there. And I, I, I held on to it forever because I didn't know, like, I assumed that it wasn't anything crazy, but. You know. well, His name was Kevin. He yeah. was uh, six years old. Right. <laughs> he, he was he was left handed, and his shoe size was a, was a five. <laughs> here's here's where all the Boba Fetts went. Oh God, Brandon! Brandon's shorts are size too small now. 
And then the, these are the uh, complete run in there. What? A <laughs> plot. <laughs> who, who says that? Who, we were just fixing a suitcase on the floor. We were just drooling over the stuff on your shelves. <clears throat> That's the complete loose run there. And in here. <laughs> Including last 17? No. I the, the only 17 I got is up there. Oh, okay. He like... Those are the expanded universe ones. Oh my god! Huh? Now, mm -hmm. Christopher, now Christopher needs to shop for some clothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got the there's little things in the back there, just like loose. You know, I love fat, obviously, the bounty hunters, and all this stuff here. If I if I ever did that to like my basement, I, my, my wife would kill me. Yeah, you'd have to move to Florida by yourself. Yeah. Oh, I'll be moving him to Brandon. <laughs> what's the? They don't have the width of your house. Though. Like five hundred. What? How large is this room? It keeps on going. It's that big. That's my kid's side, but I got I had to move. Those uh, comic book boxes are vintage collection too. Uh, Miko mentioned about putting them in cardboard in the comic book boxes, so I did that. So if, I had if you see Christopher's basement, it's a it's a child's playroom. <laughs> you have your basement, and whatever children are involved have like uh, like you know five foot square area. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, it's great. No, I need to clean it up. Because, you know, I've been working and stuff. I work like 10, 12-hour days, so I haven't had a chance to the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, it was just a real quick thing. And uh, so I did what I could. Got to be presentable. Well, yeah, we totally appreciate you taking us a tour through your collection and showing us. Uh, it's just awesome to see what other people have, how they display it, uh, you know, how they kind of um, pull certain certain things together and kind of categorize and just just the way that they like to arrange it um, right what's the what what do you, in your opinion what's the most valuable figure you have you know what's what have you seen shoot up over the last five years what's the, what's the priciest item you have single loose i probably anything, say, anything. probably say the vinyl cape yeah that or yak I think that well the that Lily Letty fet's been going up too apparently, but on the Star Wars tracker, let me see. Usually, if I shut all the lights off, you don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Look, it's Rancho Skywalker. <laughs> Rancho Collingwood. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. But you have a pretty impressive collection for sure. Thank you. I mean a for lot six, of like, six years, that's amazing. There's that's, carded there's carded, it is. there's carded figures behind these acrylics, by the way. Yeah, I mean, he, Brandon's right. To amass that collection in five years or six years is just super, super impressive. Congrats on that. Well, That's a lot of work, too, right? Yeah, a lot of it was depression, though. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, you know, it helped me through a lot of things. And when I needed cash or whatever, it paid the bills. You know, so. You, you know, Brian, when you were you were kind of alluding to that early on, I wanted to kind of, like, connect some thoughts I had just – I mean, I have like uh, ups and down memories from childhood as well. Like my household was not, you know, the classic perfect, you know, household. It just wasn't. But right. when I collect this stuff, it makes me happy. And then I sometimes think to myself, like, this takes me back to childhood, but I also don't have the greatest memories of certain areas of my childhood. So like, kind of like, why do I want to go back to that? But uh, there's just something in us that picks those fun moments, those really great memories, those Maybe you might have even been by yourself alone, just playing mm -hmm. for hours on end. And this takes you back to that quiet time when you were peaceful and you were enjoying yourself. 
Yeah. And there's something really oh, special about that. That moment. That, yeah. How that moment made you feel. You know, it doesn't, it, you, you could have had the, I can't swear, right? Because I almost did. <laughs> we we well, can believe it. You could have had the childhood and, you know, that one moment with those figures, you, you see something like that. You know, you're going through your collection or whatever, you're just looking at your shelves and you think back of how you felt when you were a kid, when you had those, you know, and, and the world could have been all over the place. It doesn't matter. That, that's my beep. That's my sensor button. But, <laughs> you know, things could have been real crappy and you look at that figure even to this day and just think about how good it made you feel when you were a kid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that, man. I, I have the same thoughts on a regular basis. I have a much smaller collection, but um, it does take me back to like that innocence, that uh, just peaceful time, enjoying something that was really special to you. And uh, you, you know, you can't put a price on that sometimes. Right. Yeah, and you know, you know, Star Wars kind of has done that for me too. Not just not just the collecting the figures and stuff, but you know, I have some great memories of my. I lost my mom too. Uh, I was a lot younger, but, you know, I remember uh, she checked me out of school to go see Return of the Jedi. Nice. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, <clears throat> it definitely does. John, John was in college. Do I? <laughs> John was in college. I was in college. Yeah. I was not in college. I'm the oldest one here, but I was 13, okay? Yeah. John was uh, 45 when uh, Return of the Jedi came out. <laughs> 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 oh man but yeah it was it it was rough for a while and uh my uncle had passed away two months before my mom and it was her brother and just i was man i was in a rut and uh i used some money that i was left and started doing this you know and a lot of it's not you know, the cards aren't totally mint. You know, to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, to a point, it does. Certain things, like, you know, my pop-up uh, R2-D2, my 48 d backs, like, that's one thing. But I don't. when I go to buy stuff, I don't... I know that like, I would rather have a, a, a decent, half-decent condition carded figure than spend a whole lot of money on a mint one. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, and there's moments where you can, you know, but there's a whole lot of moments you can't. You know, like my 12 back, I had one 12 back and it's R2D2, and I paid $400 for that. But it's it's got a little kink in the bottom where the stem is for the bubble, but other than that, it's it's flat, unpunched, you know. But it does, the collection size and all that, it doesn't matter. It's how it makes you feel, you know, and live within your means, you know. I'm I probably got out of hand a little bit here and there, but uh, we all do. Yeah, your <laughs> your back your back room told us that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've sold a lot of stuff too, believe it or not. Well, Brian, uh, you 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 brought up some good thoughts in my head and some some nice uh, aspects of collecting and being part of this community. I'm not going to do the air quotes. The lame air. Yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> this community that we're all part of, and it and it's not like oh the Facebook thing or it, you know there's right. a lot of different groups. It's an it's an overall community. We all care about the collectibles. Um, certainly, I can speak for the five of us here that we all care about the people that we deal with, and that uh, we're concerned about what the experience they have is, how they interact with us. We want everybody to have a good time. So. If you're ever, you know, if you're ever feeling like you're in a tough spot in life and 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 going to a collectible or a hobby like this feels good and and gives you some peace and some comfort, you have a community here. Uh, you know, there's going to be people you run into that are jerks and you don't want to deal with, but reach out to the people that you've dealt with, that you've bought stuff from, or you traded, you know, everybody here is really aligned at heart that we're all into the same kind of hobby and for the same reason. So you know, just reach out to any of us at any time. Uh, we'll be happy to talk to you, help you with your collection. Um, it's just really nice to hear somebody else who has a lot of passion about mm -hmm. something that we have passion about. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, you guys do a lot for the community, a lot for, I mean, even just me, and I'll, I'll speak for a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of people feel that same way about you guys and everybody else that, you know, does things for this community, whether it's give somebody advice or give them a good deal on things or just be cool, you know. It's, it's about collecting, but it's also about being good to each other, you know, and a lot of that doesn't happen nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing too. You're going to go to some toy shows, you're going to go to some, you know, some toy shops and stuff. And, and there's just going to be people that, you know, just they're, they're in it for the business and they're trying to make a buck and that's fine. That's, that's yeah. perfectly fine. But that's we have of kind of all made some relationships within this, this quote unquote community where mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's about kind of sharing the enjoyment. All right, well, so I want to remind everybody to please check out our Facebook page. If you're liking the show, if you want to see more episodes, if you want to go back and see episodes you haven't seen, it's facebook.com slash five idiots talking toys. You can find us on YouTube. Just go ahead and search us five idiots talking toys as well. It's a podcast. And uh, we also have our new sales page rogue five toys also on Facebook. Um, we thank uh, Brian very much for joining us tonight. It was really just awesome seeing his collection, seeing how he arranges it, seeing what his favorite parts are. Um, thanks very much for joining us. And, uh, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that little bell icon and get notified of new episodes. Guys, anything else tonight? Anybody uh, have anything they want to shout out? No, just want to say thanks, Brian, for coming on. And, you know, we appreciate you taking your time and, Awesome collection, and can't wait to see what's next. All right. Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate all you guys do. Thank thanks, you, Brian. Brian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Brian. All right. All right. Thank you.